Welcome back to the module four, the third lecture of this series on specification and verification of code. We, in the previous couple of lectures, we looked at pre and post conditions and we looked at specifying invariants and in particular loop invariants. And the loop invariants are used not only to reason about the code in the first place, and helping you write it, but it also helps you verify it. And in fact, it's necessary to, to verify it. This time, we're going to look at a standard uh, computer science algorithm, binary search, and we're going to look at writing and verifying it. So let me just remind you that we're doing the, um, the work in using Daphne, which is a programming language designed for reasoning. And it has uh, features like arrays and loops, uh, which are what we're going to use. And it also has specifications like pre and post conditions and invariants. And it has a verifier that we'll make use of. And if you haven't installed Daphne already, then here's how you do it. Um, use it in the web browser at riseforfun.com or go and download a tool and run it on your own machine so that you get the more of the interactive experience. OK, so in binary search, the idea in binary search is that we're given an array, and the array is sorted. That is, the elements of the array are sorted. And we're trying to find a particular key in the, in the array. And we can do so by, uh, by um, divide and conquer. That is, if we look somewhere in the array, and we find uh, that, the, that because the array is sorted, the key must be either in the, in the lower half of what we're looking at or in the upper half, we can adjust our search parameters and narrow down uh, where, where our search goes. And that will lend itself very nicely to, to some invariants that we will see in just a moment. Let's write binary search. Binary search is a method. It takes as an argument the, an array. Let's make it an array of integers. That will be simple for our purposes and a key that we're going to try to find in that array. We will also return an output parameter, and the output parameter is going to give us some indication of where that key is in the array. Now, when we write uh, a method, um, the most important thing here is going to be to write a specification that is going to say what it is that we want binary search to do. And in this case, more or less what we'd like to say is a post condition that says that if we index into the array that we were given and we index it with the value that we're returning, that we will find the key at that index. Well, that's not exactly uh, what our specification is going to say. And we can see that we're getting some complaints here. Uh, the index is out of bounds, it says, out of range. So we're using R, we don't know nothing, we have not said anything about its range, and still we're using it as an index into A. That's not allowed. So this specification is malformed as it is. That is, it could be that this specification by itself has no meaning. We must make sure that at least our specifications have some meaning. Um, and uh, so we will write a stronger post condition. I will say that R is an index into the array, and uh, if you and if you use that index, an index into the array, you will find the key there. Okay, this specification at least has a meaning, but if we think about it a little bit more, we're going to find that this is going to be problematic uh, for us um, because what if the key does not exist in the array? So we could now either write a precondition that says that the key has to exist in the array, or we could deal with it and, um, and say that we're going to return this index only if, if we found it in the first place, if it was there. We need some indication of telling the caller that whether or not we have found the, the, the key in the array. So to do that, we're, we're going to use the, the index, the output variable R, uh, we can do this a little bit differently, and the assignment that I will give you will do this in a, in a different way. So we're going to say that if the in the post state R is non-negative, then R is also going to be an index into the array, and at that index we will find the key. So here I've used the implication operator, which is a Boolean operator. You can use it in, uh, in programs as well, but it, does, it tends not to be used very often there, but it tends to be used very often in specifications. And you can read it as 
uh, 0 at most r implies these two conditions. Or you could read it as if this condition holds in the post state, then these things hold. Okay? Um, so let's write that as a specific as the post condition. And let's also have a post condition that says that if r is negative, well then the key does not exist in the array. So here there are different ways that we could write this. Let me use a quantifier because quantifiers tend to be used in other specifications, even though in the specification here there are there are some simpler features that we could use uh, to, to avoid it. But let me write a quantifier so that you get to see it as well. So I will say for all i, if i is an index into the array, then at that index we will not find a key. So in other words, we're saying here as the post condition that if when when this method returns if r is a non-negative value then it is furthermore an index into the array and there you will find the key if on the other hand r is negative upon termination of this method then it must be the case that the key does not exist anywhere in the array all right so that is going to be our spec but this uh, our post condition spec uh, but that's not all. We, we will not be able to implement binary search in, uh, with just this specification because binary search relies on that the given input is sorted and we have not said anything about that. So let's add a precondition as well that says that, that the array is sorted. And here I will also use, make use of a quantifier and I will quantify over uh, two indices. I will say for any two integers i and j, that are lined up in the following way. So they're both indices and i is, I'd like to think of it as i is to the left of j. Then we have that a sub i is at most uh, a sub j. There are several ways that you can write a, um, a condition like this that says that, that an array is sorted. And the from experience, the, the better way to write it is uh, that you have the two indices the way that I've shown it here. That has there are several reasons for that. The most important one is that this says that all pairs of of uh, elements in the array are also sorted, which is something that we often uh, need. That is, uh, if you just try to say that the adjacent elements are sorted, then you typically have to prove a lemma that says that it also holds transitively. So, um, but with the specification that I wrote, we don't have to think about that. It's going to be. Uh, what we need. So that says that it's sorted and those two are the two post conditions that we're going to assure. Okay, let's start writing the code. So binary search works by having two bounds that I will call low and high uh, and I will initialize them to be the very left um, leftmost point to the left of all elements in the array and high is going to be to the right of all of the elements of the array. Uh, and then the idea is to shrink this window uh, between low and high uh, to get to smaller and smaller areas until either we we find the key or we uh, exhaust all uh, places to look in the in the array. So I will show you that uh, in in the slide. Here is the the array. And you can see the bounds of the array. Uh, zero is to the left of all elements, and a dot length is to the right of all of the elements. The high and low markers inside the array are going to stake out three regions of the array. Everything left of low is going to be uh, elements where the, el the key is not. In fact, those elements are in fact going to be smaller than, than the key. And high is going to be marker where from that point upwards in the array, we will also not find a key. And indeed, the, you will find that those elements are going to be uh, at least uh, as large as the, as the key. So this means that the place in the array where we still have to search uh, in, is just the, the region between low and high. So the picture that I'm showing you here, that really is the invariant. This is the invariant of binary search. And, uh, so at all times, of course, zero and a dot links do not change, but we can change low and high. And we want to change them in such a way that the not here uh, indications are still true. So here we are back in the code. So what we're going to do is with the low and high, we will write the loop. And as long as there's some space between low and high, we're going to continue the loop. 
So the loop invariant, which again, we'll write right away. You can write it later as well. It just, uh, it's easier to just think upfront what the, what the loop invariant is. Sometimes you don't get the whole invariant to begin with. You write a few pieces of it or what you, what you think and you may change it or you may, may add to it later. But giving it some thought at first is always a good idea. So uh, here we're going to say uh, low and high are going to change. So we need to write some invariant about them. And the invariant I will write is that uh, they, that low, um, low and high will always follow this lineup. That is zero is at most low, which is at most high, which is at most a dot length. They're always going to be in that, that range. So now if you're used to looking at someone else's code or maybe even your own code, uh, and you're trying to figure out, oh, what are the uh, low and high? Could they, could, could it ever happen that high ever gets smaller than low? Or are they always um, in this relationship low at most high? Or could it be that high is always maybe much larger than low? That's something that you'd have to glean from the code. If you have the invariant in place, either written down like this in a machine checkable way, or as in some sort of comment, then it's easy to go and look to see what the, what the intended design is. Okay, very good. So we're now going to write two more invariants, and the two more invariants are going to correspond to the not here that I showed in the slides. So we're going to say that for all the indices that are to the left of low, uh, we uh, will not find a key there. And I'll write one that says that for all indices from high on upwards, um, there you also will not find the key. And here you see, as I had remarked oops, in a, a previous lecture, that it's quite common in computer science that we have half open intervals. That is, the, the lower bound is an inclusive bound and the upper bound is an exclusive bound. And we see that same thing here. Some people write binary search where high is not exclusive, but it's inclusive. Um, for me, I, that makes my head hurt. Uh, I, then, then there's the possibility that high may get lower than low, which doesn't feel quite right. And, uh, um, and the, um, you'd have to write other invariants and other, other conditions. Uh, Maybe this is what you get used to, but I, um, I would recommend sticking with half open intervals as I'm doing here. That tends to be the nicer way in computer science to, to do it. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do then in the, in the loop? Well, the idea, behind, um, the, the idea behind binary search is that we find a midpoint, and that, at that midpoint is where we're going to look for, uh, for, the, um, uh, for the key. So the, the invariant is the three lines that I wrote down um, in the loop invariant here. And then what makes it the binary search is the one line that I'm writing now. Okay, so we're gonna take some sort of average between low and high. And uh, this is uh, gonna give me some point between the two. Again, in a half open fashion, this could be as low as low, or it could be uh, less, strictly less than high, but it will never be as large as high just because inside the loop, we know that the guard holds. Okay, so now we can inspect the element uh, at, at that position. So we're going to say if, um, if the uh, key lies to the left of the value that we find at a sub mid, well, that means it must be, because the array is sorted, it must lie to the left of mid. So, um, well, let me write that here. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to make that region between low and high smaller, and we're going to do that by decreasing the upper end. And we're going to set high to mid because we have looked at mid uh, right here, and there, we know that the key is not there because the key is strictly less than mid. So there's no reason to include it anymore. And because high is the upper bound, that means that it's, a, that it's uh, the exclusive bound. That means that we set it to, to mid. Okay. On the other uh, end, we check if, if the key is larger than mid, then um, we're also going to do something. We're going to then in that case, adjust the, the lower 
uh, part of the range that we're searching. And here, uh, it might be tempting to set it to mid as well, but that's going to lead to a problem as I will demonstrate in a, in a bit. So what we'd like to do instead is, because low is an inclusive bound on the low, on the low end, uh, we want to make sure that, that we also don't include uh, mid there, because we've already looked at mid, we know that it's not there. So what we're going to do here is set low to mid plus one. Okay, and in other situations, well, what do we know then? Well, if key is neither strictly less than nor strictly greater than a sub mid, well, then the two are equal. So what we'd like to do in this case is just return the value that we found. In other words, uh, remember the out parameter r, I will set r to be that mid and we will return. So that's what we do. Now, it often happens that you set the output parameters to something and then you return. Uh, so in Daphne, those are two different constructs. This is just a normal assignment and return just says the uh, control flow inside the method ends here. But since the two occur often together, you can do those two by just saying return mid, which has the effect of setting the output parameter to what you say here and then returning. And this also looks like the return statement that's common in C and Java and C sharp uh, programs. Okay, we need to do one more thing, which is that if we drop out of the loop, well, then we have exhausted the entire interval. We know that uh, low and high are going to be equal in that case, because if this does not hold, but of course the invariant still holds, then the only possibility is that low and high are equal. And if low and high are equal, then these invariants tell us that, that the key is nowhere in the array. It's not up to low, and it's not from that point up, up on, uh, upwards. So then our specification said that we were to return a negative value. Doesn't matter which negative value we return. We've not said anything about promised any particular negative value, but we might as well return minus one instead of minus 12 or minus a thousand or whatever else. Uh, if we wanted to be more specific about that in, in the specification to let callers make use of that, we could have done that as well. Okay, and now you can see that the, we have no more complaints. This is correct. Now, binary search is an algorithm that you would think every computer scientist should be able to, um, to write when, even when write correctly, even when they're half asleep. But that turns out not to be the case. But when you write it like this with a verifier, you can check the steps that you're doing uh, and make sure that it actually is correct. Because there's no reason to get binary search wrong. Um, and um, there have been some discussion about that in the uh, number of years ago in the Java library. And if you know what I'm talking about, you may be curious about the program that I wrote here, but I will let you um, explore that uh, by yourself and, uh, and the reasons for that. Okay, let me just demonstrate another couple of things here. What happened if we had been mistaken about uh, these assignments? Um, well, for example, what would happen if we didn't uh, increase low as much as we did, but if we just set it to mid. Well, um, the invariants still hold at that point uh, because the, the, by changing low in this way, we, uh, we still make sure that anything to the left of low is not equal to the key. But the problem in this case is termination. Uh, in this case, it can happen that, that when we take the, the average of low and high, in particular, if high is one more than low, so we have one more spot in the array to look, for, uh, look at, then mid in this case will be set exactly equal to low. And if we then end up, happen, uh, end up with taking this branch, low would be set to the same value that it had before, and therefore will we'll be stuck in an infinite loop. Um, so that's, that's no good. What would happen if we, um, instead had done a similar mistake for, for mid. What about if we did mid minus one, uh, for example? Well, then there are a number of problems. One problem here is that then you can see that high may uh, end up on the uh, left of low, which is not what we intended. So that does not seem, seem very good. What if we had put plus one here? Could that work? Well, then again, the, uh, the loop invariant here uh, holds just fine. Um, but we have a problem with, with termination. So you can see that you can play around with, with the 
uh, with the program a little bit. Of course, we'd like to think clearly about each case, but if you have some doubts and you want to try something out, and you, you, especially if you want to learn about what the invariants are, you could try things and see where things break. Um, and that might be, give you a better understanding of the, uh, what the loop invariants are. So that's, uh, that's binary search. Okay, so as an assignment, uh, I would like you to modify the binary search so that it would always return um, some, uh, some indication between uh, zero and the length of the array inclusive where, that, where you would have inserted a key if you wanted to insert it into, uh, into the array. In other words, you would like to return a value r such that r is in the range, as I said, from 0 to a dot length inclusive, um, and such that all, all values to the left of, of the value that you're returning, to the left of r, all of those values are strictly smaller than the key, and from uh, all values to the right of r are either key or larger. Have fun with that, with that exercise and program safely.